steady. Do you know what fractals are? Fractals, my dear intellectual explorer, are those charming little patterns that can't seem to get enough of themselves. You zoom in, you zoom out, and surprise! It's the same thing again and again, like a cosmic case of déjà vu or a designer who only had one idea, but really committed to it. Nature is riddled with these overachievers, coastlines that never settle on a shape, snowflakes showing off with their six-fold symmetry, and uh, Romanesco broccoli uh, looking like it was designed by a mathematician who'd had one too many espressos. In the lofty world of mathematics, a fractal shape can become so complex that if you start staring into it, you'll either discover the secrets of the universe or forget why you started in the first place. To sum up, fractals are patterns so obsessed with themselves they just won't stop repeating, much like bad pop songs, tedious small talk, and dare I say the human condition. So let's fire up Blender. Embrace the madness and dive headfirst into the beautiful, chaotic world of fractals. Welcome to Blending with Algernon. I am Sir Algernon, Blender Instructor Extraordinaire, and this is my emotional support cursor, Freddy. Say hello, Freddy. We will be working in Blender version 4.40 today. Time to clear the canvas, Freddy, though I'm sure it was a masterpiece in the making. First things first, conjure up a bit of geometry. Nothing too extravagant. A plane will do just fine. Then let's split our window and bring up the geometry node editor in the lower portion. Press new to create a new geometry node and delete the default group input as we won't need it. Right then, pop in a cube primitive and hook it up to the group output. And look at that, a default cube gracing us with its presence yet again. Contain your enthusiasm, Freddy. We're about to do truly astonishing things with this humble cube. First, let's toss in an instance on points node and... Oh dear, the cube's vanished. That's because naturally we've given it nothing to instance. Let's try connecting the cube, shall we? And see if reality reasserts itself. Our cube arrives with eight points. Standard issue, as cubes tend to be. And on each of these, a charming little mini-me cube is dutifully instanced. It's like a family reunion, only more geometrically predictable. Freddy, we should separate the children before a fight breaks out. Let's scale the offspring down a touch. Wonderful. Let's start fractalizing. To conjure our repeating spectacle, we'll be using, what else? A repeat node. Pop one in, Freddy. There's a good lad. Our goal is to create new instances on the points of each child cube iteratively. Replace the group output connection with the output of the repeat node. Then connect the cube mesh to the geometry input on the repeat node and disconnect the mesh to instance connection for the moment. We will need to join each iteration of our new instances together. So create a join geometry node and add it to the mix. Connect our instance on points output to the join geometry input and then connect the repeat output as the new instance to instance on points. Excellent. We've created a companion cube. However, I'd like to do away with the original cube while retaining our spawnling cubes so that they may flourish. Some rewiring will be required. Disconnect the connection between repeat and join geometry. Replace it with a new output from the repeat node. Then disconnect the join output to the repeat node and connect it to our new output socket. This will allow us to pass along the iterations without involving the mother cube. Pass the instances to the top repeat output and let's see if it worked. Yes, as we increase our iterations, our cubes multiply. However, each iteration is completely replacing the previous one, not what we want. Ideally, we like to see each iteration remain as part of our ensemble, sans the mother cube, of course. To achieve this, we will recruit the simulation node. Create a simulation node and stretch it out, as we will be adding quite a few things in here momentarily. Replace the connection to the group output with the output of the simulation node and place a join node within the simulation. Then connect the bottom output from our repeat node and join it up. 
Excellent. Each iteration dutifully joins the cores. But run the simulation, and they all pile up in the same spot, like an awkward group photo. Everyone crammed in, no one visible. The fix? Move them. A gentle transformation to stop the overlap and give them a bit of personal space. Create a transform geometry node and place uh, that in the simulation. Let's adjust the translation along the Y axis by, say, two meters. Then hit play. There we are, iterations, multiplying ad infinitum, like over-enthusiastic rabbits. But do hit stop before your computer wheezes into oblivion under the sheer weight of geometry. Time to be ruthless. We'll need to delete anything that dares exist beyond a certain point. Add a delete geometry node and pop it in just before our join geometry. Uh, because timing is everything. Now, we'll need to hunt down the renegade geometry by interrogating its position with a position node. No need for a full inquisition. Just the y-axis will do, since that's where all the action is happening. So, drop in a separate XYZ node and a compare node set to greater than. For testing, let's be cautiously pessimistic and keep the threshold low, say 10. Then wire that result into the delete geometry node selection input and watch the offenders vanish with elegant efficiency. Freddy, they're not vanishing with elegant efficiency. Uh, why? Oh, I see. We're creating instances, but trying to delete points. Let's change that to instances as well. Yes, that's what we want. The iterations behind the first are there, but difficult to see when viewed head-on. Let's scale each iteration a bit. Better? As you can see, each pass-through, the simulation node, creates copies in ever-increasing scale. Perfect. Now let's add uh, some animation. Back in the repeat node, I'd like to add some rotation to each child cube. And I'd like that rotation to be about the normal of each cube, to make it more distinct. Create a scene time node, a normal node, and an align rotation to vector node. Seconds to factor, normal to vector, and rotation to rotation. Rewind and play. It's looking magnificent, but a bit fast. Let's add a math node in the mix to slow things down. Place it just after the scene time node and change to divide. Let's divide by two and see. Perfect. Now, let's grace each cluster with a second layer of animation. Because why settle for merely interesting when we can flirt with the visually excessive? Add another scene time node. I'd like to rotate about the same axis as our translation, the Y axis. Create a combine XYZ node so we can focus just on the Y axis. Connect the vector output to the rotation on our transform geometry node in the simulation. Connect the seconds to Y, then rewind and hit play. It's like looking down the throat of a blender. It's also too fast, so let's slow things down with another math node, just after the scene time node. Let's divide by 10. Yes, quite mesmerizing. Though after endless rotations in one direction, it does begin to lose the plot slightly. Let's have it oscillate instead, back and forth, in a pleasing, undulating rhythm. A bit of elegance never hurt anyone. Let's add another math node. This time, set it to a sine wave. Rewind and hit play. I love it, Freddy. Let's make the outer dangly bits longer by increasing our delete geometry threshold to around 50. I take it all back. Now I truly love it, unreasonably so. Let's pop in a camera and see what sort of visual mischief we've actually created. 
Control-Alt, numpad zero, to set our camera view. Adjust the camera distance along the y-axis and frame our creation accordingly. Then hit play. I'm not in love anymore, Freddy. Uh, I think a change of perspective is necessary. In the camera settings tab, under the properties panel, change the lens type from perspective to orthographic. Yes, we're back in business. Let's adjust our orthographic distance to reframe. And while we're at it, set the passpart 2 to 1 for better focus. Now then, let's swap out those cubes for spheres. Yes, we could have just changed the very first node in our geometry setup, but that would unleash an avalanche of vertices, likely enough to send the computer into a full existential crisis. Can't have that. So, instead we'll tiptoe to the very end, uh, just before the group output, and add a few well-placed nodes there. Let's add a subdivision surface node and increase the subdivisions to two. Also, let's add a set shade smooth node. If Cousin It had dreadlocks and fancied a good head spin, this is more or less what you'd end up with. Equal parts, hypnotic and mildly concerning. All right, time for some color. Add a set material node to the end and add a new material under the material tab in our properties panel. Let's name it fractals. And don't forget to set the name in the set material panel as well. Hop over to the shader editor and set the viewport to render. Our scene is a bit dark, so let's start with the emission strength. Set it rather low for the moment. A 0 0.1 should do. Then add a noise texture, which we will use to combine some colors into our base and emission colors in the principled BSDF. Add a color ramp for the noise texture to influence. Connect factor to factor and color to both base color and emission. Nice and tidy. Now let's breathe some life into that color ramp, shall we? I'm partial to blues and reds, as ever. Classics never go out of style. Next, let's get both a mapping node and a texture coordinate node. Connect generated to vector and vector to vector. While we're at it, let's bring the scale down to around a 0 0.75 in the noise texture. We're getting a nice blend. Good. Next, some lighting. Create an area light and raise it above our creation. Set the shape to disk, the size to around 5 meters, and the power to around 1000 watts. Good color, but it needs a kick. Switch back to the shader editor and let's increase the metallic setting to full and the roughness down to get some reflection and a good shine of our area light. Yes, that's looking good. Now let's add another area light, but this one from the bottom, pointing up. Set it to disk, size to around 5 meters and the power to 500 watts. Also, let's tinge the light with some additional blue. Switch over to the compositor for a bloom. Tick Use Nodes and add a glare node. Set it to bloom and high quality. Then go over to the World Settings tab in the Properties panel and set the color to full black. Don't forget to change our viewport shading to Always to see the effects of our compositor. It's getting there, Freddy, but that emission we so gallantly set earlier has served its purpose in lighting rehearsals. Time to graciously retire it from the shader. Back to the shader editor, set its strength to zero and give it a well-earned rest. Ah, the mystery of life. At last I found you, tucked away in a hypnotic fractal. Who knew enlightenment would come with such mesmerizing geometry? Freddy, finishing touches. Let's add a third area light to our scene and place it at the very end of our iterations. Point it towards the camera, set the size to 15 meters, shape to disk, and power to 500 watts.
Ah, yes, that extra light. Delivering a touch of rim lighting so flattering, it's practically showing off. Well played, Illumination. It's a keeper, Freddy. But let's show our friends how they might tailor the experience to their own eccentric tastes. Back in the Geometry Node Editor, a bit of fiddling with nodes and settings can yield all sorts of variations. For instance, mute the subdivision surface node and square things up a bit, quite literally. Hmm, interesting. Very taste-specific, shall we say. Now then, what else can we tinker with while we're feeling brave? Ah, yes, vertices. But take care, Freddy. Overindulging and the computer will go on strike. Only increase them a little at a time, please. We don't want a rebellion on our hands. Interesting, but in my opinion, it tumbles straight back into the taste-specific category. Let's reset and crank up the iterations in our original repeat node, shall we? One simply cannot improve upon perfection, can one, Freddy? Let's render an image just to confirm, for the sake of thoroughness. Perfect. I think we're good to go. Just pick your output and give that magic render button a tap. No pressure. It only defines everything. Ah, fractal art therapy, Freddy. It's like giving your anxiety a cup of tea, a gentle swirl of infinity, and telling it to kindly get a grip. This has been Blending with Algernon. If you enjoyed your time with us, please consider sharing, liking, and subscribing. Also, the working files for this tutorial are available in the description below. Until next time, blend on.